This is Mac OS Ken. Not enough room in iPhone City. Barron's offers opposing takes on Apple shares and an Apple angle on the Twitter tale. It is Monday, the 21st of November, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you. Patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Foxconn's hiring rush came to a sudden stop at the end of the week last week. A piece from the South China Morning Post says Apple's manufacturing partner put a freeze on staffing up at its iPhone City plant in Zhengzhou, China, because it ran out of quarantine space. I know you know which plant I'm talking about. It's the one that saw a small COVID outbreak turn into a huge issue, first with closed-loop production, then workers complaining of mistreatment, then workers fleeing the plant, then Apple warning of extended wait times for iPhones, then the plant and the area around it going into full lockdown before the plant reopened, again in closed-loop mode on the 9th of November, Then the Chinese government appealing to retired members of the People's Liberation Army to answer the government's call and take part in the resumption of production. And I'm sure I left something out. Anyone who answered the call to come to work or come back to work apparently found a shortage of space. On Friday, the South China Morning Post had two local recruitment agents saying the Foxconn plant had suspended hiring for three days due to limited quarantine capacity. That seems to have started a day or two before the report ran. The site says the freeze was only enacted through Saturday, the 19th of November. After that, it looks like a lot of hurry up and wait. The post says going in, new hires have to go through a health check and a quarantine at a designated location before going to work on production lines. That is a four-day quarantine where it seems to be creating a bottleneck. The piece has an unidentified Foxconn exec indicating that over 100,000 people have submitted info into the company's pre-hiring system. If every applicant were hired, the report says it would be enough for Foxconn to fill all of its vacant positions. I guess now they just need vacant rooms. Duality, thy name is Barron's. That side had two pieces over the past few days, one arguing a best of times, the other arguing a worst of times, both centered on shares of Apple. Arguing best of times? Well, let me correct myself. Neither Jacob Sonenschein nor Eric J. Savitz were arguing best or worst. Rather, Sonenschein was looking at positives, while Savitz expressed worry over days to come. Starting with Sonenschein, he says a big reason the stock market refuses to break is due to Apple. The markets were down a couple of days last week, though not as bad as they could have been. Reasons for the hold in his estimation included a better-than-expected consumer price index report, a hope that the Fed will tap the brakes on interest rate hikes, and strength for the S&P 500. That last one is tied to Apple in a pretty big way. According to Sonenshine, Apple's market cap is about 7% of the S&P 500's total market value, so if Apple stock performs well, it supports the index. It's not just the S&P 500 helped by Apple shares, though. With hardware revenue expected to come in around $300 billion this year, shares for display makers, chip makers, and other components producers are also buoyed. Finally, says Sonenshine's post, one of the most important reasons Apple can act as a market indicator is the reliability of its earnings. They have held up well recently as iPhone demand remains strong. Services continue to grow as the company has entered newer markets, such as digital entertainment and payments, which are taking market share from traditional entertainment and transactions. Of course, past performance is not indicative of future results, a fact of which Sonenshine is well aware. The point, he says, is that Apple shares haven't broken yet, although that doesn't mean they can't. The market will have to see what the fourth quarter and the company's 2023 outlook 
looks like. Cue Mr. Savitz. The self-professed Apple fanboy has generally been pretty bullish on Apple's shares. Again, that is Savitz himself saying so. But when I assess the situation now, he writes, I see reasons for concern. Growth is slowing and might go negative. Then valuation is elevated. Apple shares look vulnerable. While he's aware of Apple's great-looking numbers for the September quarter compared to other tech stalwarts, Savitz argues that the whole thing hinged on the Mac. Revenue for Apple's computers was up 25% versus the same quarter a year earlier, hitting $11.5 billion. That was driven largely by the Mac recovering from supply constraints in the June quarter. Such a save will not be repeated this quarter. In fact, Apple CFO Luca Maestri warned on the last earnings call that Mac revenue was going to drop in a big way for the current quarter, thanks largely to a particularly tough compare. Meanwhile, sales for everything else are expected to take a hit, thanks in part to foreign exchange headwinds and the off-and-on production problems for the iPhone 14 Pro line. Savitz is an Apple fan. He likely knows there are plenty more out there just like him. But the economy is the economy. People love their iPhones, he writes, but they also like to eat, pay the rent, and fuel up their cars. To think sales won't be affected by a recession seems unrealistic. If you're looking for Apple fellow Phil Schiller on Twitter, don't. Apple Insider says the Cupertino Company's former senior vice president of worldwide marketing has deactivated his Twitter account. Content-wise, the world's not missing much. When the account was active, Apple Insider says, Schiller used it to promote Apple's various products and services as a continuation of his previous role as SVP of worldwide marketing, as well as his current Apple Fellow position. Why'd he kill the account? Yeah, there's no official explanation, leaving the world to assume it has to do with the bundle of chaos new Twitter owner Elon Musk has turned the service into. Listing a few issues, the piece says Musk's initiatives have included mass layoffs and increasing demands to employees to reinvigorate the microblogging service, alongside various changes that have led many users to consider other services. You could argue they're master done with it. The latest controversy spewed from the birdhouse had Musk using a Twitter poll to decide whether to reinstate the Twitter account of former President Donald Trump. The vote ended with the account being reactivated, though it's unclear whether the former president will actually start using the service again. We don't know, but it is plausible that Schiller is sending a message by ending his ability to send messages. If Twitter under Musk looks like a runaway train, you may be wondering what can stop it, or at the very least keep it on the rails. The answer may be in Silicon Valley. Yoel Roth, former head of trust and safety at Twitter, has written an opinion piece for the New York Times addressing the company today. Having left after Musk came in, Roth says the exodus of marketing and advertising money may have an effect. Legislators and regulators may have an effect. However, Roth argues, perhaps the most significant check on unrestrained speech on the mainstream internet are the app stores operated by Google and Apple. The way Roth sees it, failure to adhere to Apple's and Google's guidelines would be catastrophic, risking Twitter's expulsion from their app stores and making it more difficult for billions of potential users to get Twitter's services. This gives Apple and Google enormous power to shape the decisions Twitter makes. A bit further down the page, Twitter will have to balance its new owner's goals against the practical realities of life on Apple's and Google's internet, no easy task for the employees who have chosen to remain. And as I departed the company, he writes, the calls from the app review teams had already begun. Would Apple and Google take action against Twitter? Bloomberg's Mark Gurman does not think so. In Sunday's Power On newsletter, he wrote, 
I expect Apple and Google to give Twitter an unusual amount of leeway. Twitter's brand and importance remain strong and alienating hundreds of millions of users who are glued to their devices because of the app would be a losing situation. As would upsetting Musk, he continues, who operates two other influential companies, Tesla and SpaceX, that makes it in everyone's interest to avoid an all-out digital war. Not sure whether German thinks too much of Musk or too little of Apple CEO Tim Cook. While he probably doesn't want to go to war with Twitter's new owner, he does have certain expectations. Cook was asked about Twitter's place in the App Store during last week's interview with CBS Mornings. A piece from Mac Rumors quoted his response, saying, They say that they are going to continue to moderate, and so I count on them to do that, because I don't think anybody really wants hate speech on their platform. Hey, did you hear about Disney bouncing Bob Chappick and replacing him with Bob Iger as CEO? That's right, Bob Iger is back as CEO. I think less than three years after leaving that position. There's no Apple tie-in. I got no story for this. It's just kind of stunning. I feel bad for Chappick. He was who he was when they hired him, and he stayed that guy. That said, Bob Iger is kind of awesome. Chappick got business. Iger gets business. And the whole Disney magic thing. Personally, I'm excited to see what happens. Today on the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast... TMO Managing Editor Jeff Butts and I talk over today's two big Mac OS Ken stories, Barron's duality on Apple shares, and Apple's place in the Twitter tale. That is all today on the Daily Observations podcast from the Mac Observer, online at macobserver.com, or wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken brought to you by me and supported by people like you patrons through patreon find out more and that your support at patreon.com slash mac os can advertising handled by backbeat media online at backbeatmedia.com you can reach me a couple of ways Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.